Okay, so I don't know if you've noticed this before, but when it comes to certain types of zeros that we have for polynomial functions, they tend to occur in these weird little pairs. For example, you never see a solution that is just x equals uh, 3i. You never see an answer that's just x equals 5 plus the square root of 2. Anytime a square root or an i, or an I is involved, when we have uh, quadratic or polynomial equations, there's always a plus or minus with that. And that's what we tend to see with irrational and complex solutions. In particular, we want to focus on those complex solutions. And here's what you need to know. So if f of x, if f of x is a polynomial function, if this is a polynomial function, with real coefficients if f of x is a polynomial function with real coefficients then complex zeros then complex zeros occur in what we call conjugate pairs the conjugate pairs is just what I was talking about with the plus or minus. It basically says this. It says that um, if x is equal to negative 3 plus 2i is a 0. If x equals negative 3 plus 2i is a 0, then x equals negative 3 minus 2i is also a zero. These guys are going to occur in conjugate pairs. Okay, So let's take that information and apply it to this problem. So suppose that I give you the function, the polynomial function, 2x to the fourth minus 9x to the third plus 61x squared minus 25x minus 29 and then I say this x equals 2 plus 5i is a 0 so this is the information the information that I'm giving you and I want you to do this I want you to find find all zeros and all intercepts. All right, so my suggestion, if you see something like this on the test, is to go ahead and start putting information down that, that you know. For example, you know this. In terms of the zeros, because the degree is four, we're supposed to have four zeros. I gave you one. I gave you that one of the zeros is 2 plus 5i. Not only did I give you a zero, I gave you a complex zero, which means his conjugate. His conjugate is also going to be a zero. So that means 2 minus 5i is another zero. So you've got two out of the four. We should have to figure out what the other ones are. In terms of the intercepts, well, if we want to talk about the x-intercepts, we're kind of in trouble right now because these guys are complex and they don't correspond to real number, or they're not real numbers, so they don't correspond to x-intercepts. So I can't say anything about the x-intercepts right now. But I can, as always, talk about the y-intercept, which is going to be the ordered pair 0, comma, and it's really just the constant near the end, so comma, negative 20, Nine. All right. So this next part is going to be the roughest part of the whole problem. Okay. We're going to do synthetic division, and when we do synthetic division, uh, we need to make sure that this is spaced out correctly. 
And the reason I need it to be spaced out correctly is because we're going to be dealing with complex numbers in the middle of the synthetic division, so they're going to be double wide because you have the real and the imaginary part. So make sure that you have the appropriate space for that. So there's my k, x to the fourth, x to the third, x squared, x, and the constant. Uh, you may even choose to do something like this. Uh, just kind of create a little bit of extra separation here so that these numbers don't bleed together and cause confusion. Because again, those complex numbers are going to be twice as wide because they have two different components. All right, so my k value, I'm going to start with 2 plus 5i. You can already tell this has got to be a good one. And then my coefficients are 2x to the 4th minus 9x to the 3rd plus 61x squared minus 25x minus 29. <clears throat> all right. Now, if we do all of this correctly, over here in that remainder box, it should be 0, even with the imaginary stuff. So let's see what happens. First of all, bring down the 2. And now we're going to multiply. Well, we're multiplying 2 times this complex number. So that's 2 times 2. We get 4. 2 times 5i, so that's plus, plus 10i. And now we combine these guys. Combine the real stuff, so that's negative 5. And then plus 10i. And now we have to multiply, oh dear. This is where it gets kind of messy because we need to take these two guys and multiply them together. So what you might want to do is just to have an extra piece of paper. Okay. So I've got this extra piece of paper up here and I'm going to do some work on, on the side. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to take 2 plus 5i times negative 5 plus 10i. And I'm just going to have to FOIL this. Okay, So it gives me negative 10. On the outside is plus 20i. On the inside is minus 25i. On the outside is plus 50i squared. Well, as we've seen many times in the past, this plus 50i squared becomes negative 50 when you change the sign. And so now we have negative 60 plus, oh, excuse me, that's not plus, uh, that's minus 5i. All right, so let's put that into play here. So that's negative 60 minus 5i. All right, combine these guys, we get 1 and minus 5i. Now I know this stuff they're doing right now is it's gonna it's gonna be time consuming. But once you do this and you go to the next phase, the next phase is a lot easier. Just trust me on that. Alright, now I have to do another product. So let me go back to my extra piece of paper here. We are trying to multiply two plus five i times one minus five i. And when we do this, let's see, out, our first is 2, outside is minus 10i, inside is plus 5i, and the last is minus 25i squared. And minus 25i squared becomes plus 25. For a grand total of 27 minus 5i. All right, so 27 and minus 5i. When these combine, we get negative 2, no, positive 2, excuse me, positive 2, uh, minus 5i. See one wrong sign there? I could have messed up the whole problem. And then we're going to have one last product here. All right, so... To do this last product, we are multiplying two 
2 plus 5i times 2 minus 5i. All right, first terms is going to be 4. Outside is minus 10i. Inside is plus 10i. And the last product is 25i squared. 25i squared becomes plus 25. So 29, oh, well, these guys just go away, right? So 29 goes here, and oh, look at that. You get your remainder of zero. Clean living, let me tell you. All right, so now we're going to do synthetic division again, but this time, instead of using 2 plus 5i, we're going to use his conjugate and his conjugate is 2 minus 5i. Remember with conjugates, the real part stays the same, but you change the sign of the imaginary part. All right, so here, bring down the 2. This multiplication is still just nice and easy, so 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times negative 5i is negative 10i, and we're left with just negative 1. And what you're going to find out is that the second pass that you make when you use the conjugate, um, it's going to make the imaginary stuff kind of go away. It kind of helps even things out. Multiply this times 2 minus 5i, so that's negative 2. Negative 5i times negative 1 is positive 5i. And we're left with negative 1, and the imaginary pieces go away. That is super neat. And then finally, we get negative 2 plus 5i. And there's my remainder of 0. That's what we were supposed to have, right? I mean, that's what we said above. We said that if you have a complex 0, his conjugate is also going to be a 0. And now we take uh, what's left over here. We're going to take this guy that went from x to the 4th to x to the third to x squared, I'm going to write that equation. 2x squared minus 1x minus 1 equals 0. And believe it or not, this is going to factor. If you do the AC method, 2 times 1 is 2, and you can totally find factors of 2 that subtract 1. So it doesn't really take much manipulating to get here. You don't even really get choices here. 2x squared has to break down as 2x times x. And 1 can only break down as 1 times 1. Now it's just a matter of getting the signs in the right spot. To get a negative here, you have to have 1 positive and 1 negative. So if I put a plus 1 here and a negative 1 here, that's going to work out perfectly for us. You get a plus 1x on the inside, minus 2x on the outside. So plus 1, minus 2 gives me the minus 1. And then from here, we use that zero factor theorem to solve x is equal to negative one-half, or from here, x equals one. So we're able to factor the resulting quadratic equation. We get our two remaining zeros, so let's put those back in with the list of everything else up here at the top. So our zeros, we have negative one-half, and we have positive one. Since both of these are real, each one is going to correspond to an x-intercept. So we get negative 1 half comma 0, and we get 1 comma 0. So even though we had four zeros, uh, only two of those guys were real, so we only get two x-intercepts. And then we got the y-intercept. So I know that this can take a while to do, especially when it comes to the imaginary pieces. Uh, we can use our graphing calculators to help ourselves out just a little bit. Okay, so on the graphing calculator, let me remind you that down here, as a secondary feature to the decimal, is the i, which means some of the multiplication that I was doing. Like here, I needed to do 2 plus 5i times negative 5 plus 10i. So if I use parentheses correctly, 2 plus 5 i times negative 5 plus 10 second 
decimal to get the i. Okay, so that's the product that I'm looking for, and you see that I get negative 60 minus 5i. If I take this result right here, 1 minus 5i times, so my k value was 2 plus 5i, 2 plus 5i, and there's the 27 minus 5i. So if you've got a graphing calculator, maybe you keep that on hand just to check your work. It would be great if you can do this stuff by hand just like I showed you on my little piece of paper here. Um, but you can always resort to using the graphing calculator if you need to. Okay? But practice. Practice using this so that if you can use it on a test, um, you're not wasting time trying to figure out where everything is. And you can just do it. All right? We've got one more problem to do in this section. Uh, it's got a neat little twist to it. So, see you on the flip side.